But the new factor in Toulouse is the daddy of them all. <laughs> The final assembly line is where the various components of the plane will be joined together to create the finished aircraft. Work began in 2001 on a complex that would cost 240 million pounds alone. There's enough steel here to build the Eiffel Tower four times over. The factory is split into bays. The roofs hoisted into place, complete with lighting and fire control systems already installed. A third of a mile long and 270 yards wide, it covers 24 acres, big enough to hold eight planes at once. Ultimately, it will produce one new A380 every single week of the year. An exciting, perhaps daunting prospect for the man who has to sell them. Everything's scaled up. If the airplane's big, the tools must be big. The building must be big. And just think, you look around here, you're looking at a construction site now, you look at those massive cranes up there that can move big fuselage sections around, but in a few months, when we're back here, you'll see an airplane coming together. The reasoning behind all this is simple. Historically, the demand for air travel doubles every 15 years. With increasingly busy airports and the skies becoming ever more crowded, in the future the world will need bigger planes on every route to prevent an aviation gridlock. The biggest airliner currently in service is the hugely successful but aging Boeing 747. The basic design is over 30 years old. Airbus are investing billions so they can offer a more modern, efficient design and they have to hope that the market continues to expand. So far, many of the world's leading airlines agree. What we have to do now, after the orders have been taken, the contract's done, the money's been put down, we have to make sure that we deliver on what we promise. And that means we have to have not just world-class engineering, but world-class manufacturing as well. Back in Britain, that manufacturing process is well underway. It's now a critical stage in removing the wing from its frame. Alan Ferguson is in charge of attaching two cranes to the solid titanium lifting points on the 30-ton wing. We're making sure we get the crane correctly aligned with the lifting attachment, so as when we make the initial lift, we don't get any sway on the wing, so it's, it's critical, yeah. With both cranes properly aligned, the lift itself can now go ahead. The operation has been rehearsed many times, but only in a computer. Within half an hour, they will find out if their simulations have been correct. A multi-million pound wing depends on it. Mistakes at this stage can cause a lot of damage, and uh, because of the sheer size and weight of everything, we need to make sure we've got everything covered safety-wise. The next step is to free the fuselage end of the wing using compressed air to retract the huge steel clamp that holds it in place. But there's a problem. No matter how many times they try, the clamp won't fully release. After several checks, they work out what's wrong. A forgotten bolt is in the way. Right here. Right it's a frustrating glitch for Alan. Everyone ready? Going back. The clamp is off, but it's a delay that Alan could do without. 
go on. Just want to get them floors up. At last, the true scale of the wing becomes clear. The final job is to make sure that all the attachment points have been released. To forget one now would be disastrous. If we did forget something, then it would uh, uh, the component which was still attached would get deformed, damaged. Right, we're ready to go. We want everyone in place now, yeah. and then we're, it's like we're going for it now, completely. All right, gather round please, gents. The operations team and the crane driver is going to take some weight, we're going to release the front spar and then we're going to remove the wing. Try to stay calm, don't panic. We'll do everything nice and slowly, there's no rush now. But we, once we start, we're not stopping. Thanks very much. Alright, you're clear, take it off. Get that spar support out, please, is it down? Right. Yeah. With one small movement, the wing is free. Oh, it's a clearance. We're clear. Right, I think the wing tip's clear. clear. Yeah. Now it can be lifted clear of the main jig and into the next hall. Don't forget the outboard end. For the team, it's a dramatic climax to three years of hard work. I was really elated. <laughs> might not look it, but inside I'm quite excited. Well done, Jim. The wing may look big now, but once the moving parts are fitted, it will grow by half as much again, and it's only one of a pair. The true size of the finished airliner is starting to show. I think the whole world's going to uh, look on in awe the day it flies. I think the Boeing Aircraft Company have got something to uh, be very wary of. But even as the wing is lowered into a horizontal position for its final assembly, the finer points of the A380's design are still far from finalized. The schedule is so tight, there's no time to build one or two aircraft, test fly them, make adjustments and then carry on. Modern computer design and simulation techniques mean that everything is happening at once. In Hamburg, in the massive new hangar built to assemble sections of fuselage, work has already started on the parts for the first six aircraft. Even though it will be over a year before the first A380 is in one piece, let alone racing down a runway. The fuselage is built up from aluminium panels stitched together with thousands and thousands of rivets fitted mostly by hand. Parts come from all over the world. Floor beams made from ultra-light carbon fiber are from Japan. The entire tail section is also carbon fiber, made in a state-of-the-art Airbus facility in Spain. Keeping track of it is a real challenge for manager Tees Holst. The difficulty here is to get the parts in time. We have so many different parts, a huge amount of parts, and to get them on one day when we start a assembly sequence, that's one of the a real hard tasks to get everything on time.